Okay guys and welcome to our third Android development tutorial. Today we're going to learn about the activity and what it is in the life cycle. So each class in Android always, if it's to do with something to do with Android itself, will always subclass one of Android's classes. The, some examples of these are activities, fragments, services, content providers, database helpers, uh, just to name a few, there are loads of them. There are loads of them. And the major one, the most important one, is the activity class. An activity essentially in Android is each screen. So when you bring up a screen on your app, the first screen that comes up, the one that came up when earlier on, was called the main activity. See, it's, this is our main activity. So this is, what's being shown here is essentially an activity. If we had a button there and we clicked it, and it would bring up a new screen, that would bring up a new activity. So that's how that works. Each screen is its own activity. Now, when we get into fragments, it's gonna get a little more confusing because fragments are essentially chunks of user interface in an activity. Um, that you can rearrange them, but we'll get into that when we start developing this app to run on tablets and smartphones. But anyway, so the structure is always public, class, main activity, or whatever you want to call it. With all, same thing here, extends activity. So we're subclassing the activity class. And now, you can actually shortcut to various things on thing, but essentially this is the activity life cycle. So, Android does certain things with the activity. All your code is in certain methods. So the on create options menu, this is for the action bar and the menu button on old, older devices. We'll ignore that for the time being. We'll get to that later. So essentially how it works is that the activity goes through a series of steps in a certain order. It's on create, on start, on resume, on pause, on stop, on destroy. Now there's on restart, which can be a little bit confusing, but we won't cover that for now. So essentially is, when you press the, act, the button to bring up the screen, the first thing it's gonna call is uncreate. So, you know, on the activities creation, do this code. And in this method here that we've overridden, it's a super method, or we're, we're uh, overriding the method of the activity class, or super, class, super it. So, public void uncreate, bundle saved into the state, we'll get into bundles. But that's a parameter being passed in. Of, it's a, an object bundle called saved instance state. And then super and on create. And then set content view. We'll get into second content view in a minute. But essentially this is why how you, this is the layout for the screen. Then we have on start. So after on create is called and this code executes, it then calls on start. And any code you put in here will call. And we're just using this as a placeholder. It then calls on resume. And on resume is generally used for anything you want to happen every single time the activity comes up. Because sometimes, say you press the back button, on create doesn't get called again, I think. But there are times when on resume is always called, but on create is not, and you need to know those. Then, after on resume, the activity is now visible to the user and can be interacted with. <clears throat> then comes when you press, let's say, the back button. It goes to on pause. It pauses that activity and another activity is coming to the front. Okay, now this code has to be very fast because as if you press the back button to go back a screen, on pause has to execute and then it goes back. So if you have a big bunch of heavy, hard code there, you need to keep that very snappy. Otherwise, it's going to take ages for it to come back and if it takes too long, we'll get activity not responding or app not responding. Then on stop and then on destroy. On stop is when the activity has been stopped and is now in the back stack, it's as it's called. Your activities layer on top of each other in a thing called a back stack, that's for the back button. And then on destroy is when the activity is being destroyed. Um, what you generally do with on destroy is if you have any databases open, you'd close them in on destroy. If you have uh, little things happening, you'd pause. Like for example, on, on pause could be used to stop a background task, uh, stop a video playing. You know, when things like that happen. A good example of on pause is, if you watch a video on let's say an Android tablet, and you press down the bottom right in the notifications window, it stops. That's because the on pause method has been called. 
So that's how it actually works. Now, as you can see here, we have our set content view or that layout, that main activity layout now, or is a file here in the gen files or that Java. So we're actually going to open this up. You never modify this, it's auto generated. But as you can see, these are all these things called obviously all ints, public static final int. And if we look in layout, main activity layouts int is equal to this. Now you need you don't need to even look at this file, but I'm just showing you where it comes from. So this file has an ID int called or in the or.java file, I'm an idiot, called this int here. So we don't want to modify that, we just X out of it. So essentially what's, bugger, where did my DDMS go? Oh, oh my God, what the hell just happened? There we go, got it back. <laughs> don't know why I clicked there, I must have clicked something by accident, but that's, the main activity is known as that ID. So you go or.layout.mainActivityLayout, that means it's going to show up this screen that we define here in the WASI editor. What you see is what you get editor. So it's making a reference to that. So if we want to change the layout, we change this file or we can make a new layout file. And instead of having a new and a second layout file, we say or dot layout dot main activity layout. Now all your layouts save in a layout folder. Now there can be many types of layout folder. We're going to get into alternate resources another time, but you can, change things there. So I'm going to give you a quick rundown on the WASIG editor itself. So here's our API level. You can actually change, you know, it'll refresh the layout and it'll tell you what it'll look like on that device. Roughly, um, you can't trust the action bar. Okay, we can also set a theme for different versions. I'm getting a Skype message. Okay, now the themes are contained in the values called styles. So different versions of Android will run different styles. So if you want Android 4 devices and greater to run theme.hollow.light, but you want older Android devices to run theme.no action bar or theme.no title bar, things like that, you'll, you'll understand these more as we move on. So essentially this is a layout, dead center screen with a single text view object. A text view is essentially a text view. This is kind of akin to developing a web page in a sort of way. It's a bit confusing to be quite honest. The XML format is. Okay, so we're going to put a button in our layout. And this is a relative layout, which means that everything's relative. So here you look, it says center horizontal true, center vertical true. Now if we look at the actual code itself, here's the code for it. So Android text at string hello so if we go to our values and go to our strings hello world see if we change this text to hello android it's recommended all your strings are saved in here and we save this and when we x out of it it should change that but it's not doing it now all of a sudden it might take a bit of time we'll just refresh this It's sometimes changes can take, yeah, see, I re reopened the file and it came up as hello Android. So that's the string resource for that. So what we're going to do is we're going to put drag a button in and we're going to put that, okay, a line below. Now, we really shouldn't be working with relative layouts. They're a bit confusing. So we're actually going to change the layout type and we're going to make a linear layout vertical. So a linear layout, there's layouts, all different types of layouts in Android. We'll actually get into more on this in the next video. We'll cover building a simple layout.